Hey guys, Mixed Media Girl here. In this video, I am doing a glitter and alcohol ink resin bowl. And this one came out so gorgeous and sparkly. I just love it. So I started off by putting some chunky holographic silver glitter in the center of my mold and then along the outside. And this is a silicone tray mold that is a little bit over 13 inches across. And for this project, I use about 12 ounces of resin. Now, as a note, if I were to be making this into a tray and not a bowl, I would use more resin. So this is just to make this into a bowl. So I just wanted the glitter up along the top edge and then in the very center of my design. Honestly, if I do this exact thing again, I will sprinkle the glitter a little bit better. I don't think I did that great of a job, but it still came out looking gorgeous. I then poured my resin in, and this is Mixed Media Girl Artist Resin. And again, I'm using about 12 ounces, maybe slightly more, but about 12 ounces. So make sure that you measure the mold that you're using and you know how much resin it takes. And for a bowl, you want to fill this up no more than about a quarter inch thick or even a little bit less is fine. So don't overdo it. If you are if you use too much resin, then the bowl will be too thick. And when you go to shape it into a bowl, it will likely crack. Now it has been cold, so I did preheat my resin by setting my bottles in front of a space heater for about 10 minutes before I started my project, before I mixed my resin up. You can also put it in a warm water bath if you like, and this will help to get all of the air bubbles out of your project. So once I put my clear resin in there, I went in with the alcohol inks. And as a note, the alcohol inks themselves will also help to remove air bubbles, but it definitely helps if your resin isn't too cold. I'm primarily using Ranger alcohol inks here, but also a couple of pinatas. And it doesn't entirely matter what alcohol inks you use, but they will react differently and some definitely work better for this technique than others. So my preference is Ranger and Pinata. And I used a metallic purple and then a metallic blue. And then this one is a nice, beautiful, deep cobalt blue. I was going for, I guess you could say kind of mermaidy colors with blue, purple, and silver, essentially. And whatever colors you want to use, it's totally up to you. Do be careful to not overdo it. It's actually kind of hard to overdo it, but you can. Um, if you put too much alcohol ink in here, the resin won't cure properly. So just keep that in mind. But once again, it's actually pretty hard to overdo it with the alcohol inks. Now if I'm using metallics in my piece, I like to start off with those because those tend to be pretty transparent. The exception to that is if I'm using silver or gold, those actually react a little bit differently and they kind of tend to sit on top of the other colors. So I'll usually put those on a little bit later on. Like here I'm using some silver and this is a pinata silver. And then I will also put on the white either last or late in the process because the white is heavy and it pushes those colors down, which is what creates the really awesome alcohol ink depth effect that you get with this. It's actually called a Petri dish technique. I just haven't done it with a bowl before, so I was pretty excited to try it out. So I put my white in here, which this is pinata white. It's nothing special. It's just pinata white alcohol ink. And then I went back in with a couple of my favorite colors, one of the blues and one of the purples, and added just a little more. I wanted to make sure that I added some, especially around the edge of my mold, because if you have ever used um, alcohol inks in resin, you'll know that as this dries, the alcohol ink all tends to move towards the center of the mold. And that's just what it does organically. It's I think a really cool thing that happens actually, but you do want to make sure that if you want the alcohol inks near the edge, you put them as close to the edge as you can get. So I put a little more of one of the purples, one of the blues, and then went in with just a little more white to help push those down just a little bit more. 
Now from this, I left the design like this, but if you would like, you can take a stick and you can swirl it through and kind of modify that design and make different patterns. That's totally up to you. Uh, one thing I did do is I used some isopropyl alcohol, 91% to remove air bubbles. And I decided to add a little bit of glitter to the top of my project here, which I was pretty sure would be the bottom of the bowl. Um, I do kind of regret this a little bit and unfortunately I did it with a stick which kind of made the glitter a little uneven and added it a little heavier than I intended. So I think if I were to do that again I would just do it with my hands. I then let that sit for about seven hours. Um, it depends on the resin that you're using and how hot it is or how cold it is. Um, because it's been colder, I actually let this sit for about seven hours when usually it's more like six, but sometimes it's even up to eight hours. And if it's really hot, it can even be down to five hours. So you have to kind of watch it and you want it to be at the point where it is very, very flexible, but you can demold it easily and it should not be sticky. If anything, it could be very slightly tacky, but it should in general not be sticky. So I demolded it and I put it into a plastic bowl. This bowl is about 100 ounces. I got it at Bed Bath & Beyond quite a while ago. You can find 100 ounce plastic bowls on Amazon or wherever. And I mold it into the bowl and then I shape my sides how I like them. You can also do this on the outside of the bowl if you'd prefer, but I like the look on the inside of the bowl much better. So that's what I do. But if you'd like, go ahead and do it on the outside of the bowl. That's totally up to you. And once I was done shaping it, I put just a piece of plastic in here and then a resin bottle to hold it down while it cured. I let it cure overnight and then took the resin and plastic out and demolded it. And for this, I didn't use any kind of mold release, but it should come out fairly easily. I just pull up gently on the sides of the bowl until it pops out. Don't worry, it's not delicate. You're not going to break it. It would take a lot of force and it should come out fairly easily. So this is the inside of the bowl and I think it's just gorgeous. I got so much depth with those alcohol inks. It's really, really pretty. And um, as you can see here, of course, the design had changed a lot. So it pulled away from the edges towards the center, as I said, it would do. <laughs> and here's the bottom little too much glitter for my taste, but the sides are just awesome. So there you guys go. Glitter and alcohol ink bowl. I really hope that you enjoyed this. I hope you liked the project. Let me know what you think down in the comments and I will see you all next time.